We don't know who we are in America, do we? Aren't you part black? Mostly. Mostly. I was raised as a poor black boy. He was raised, and uh, so nobody knows what they are, so everything is okay, right? We are all mongrels in America. We all come from many places. What is it? Who some imbecile called it a melting pot? <laughs> We're all boiled down into a stew. A smelting pot. Smelting pot, <laughs> yeah, smelting. No, your friend Tim, I bought him. Those. You know, I talked to him about Indian fish. I'm on in treaty rights, too. He's very, very well spoken about this. Also, since he doesn't drink anymore, he speaks beautifully. His uncle's the head of the tribe there. He wants to adopt my wife so we can run our business tax-free, too. Matson? Mm-hmm. Well, really, is he? Yeah. He used mm. to be a fisherman there, but he wouldn't claim his Indian rights, and so he had to, he had to leave. fish by the DNR Taking rule. Taking advantage of things, yeah. Matson's been fishing for about three generations. Though. Yeah. But then you don't want to get into this ethnic cleansing thing, you know. No, I mean, it looks like it's pretty ugly. It's pretty ugly. Because if it was ethnic <laughs> cleansing, we would be the first to die for some <laughs> reason, right? Yeah. Huh? The clan would get me. Aren't they pretty? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's completely crazy. Well, you know, the thing is that what you don't... Um, what was never what was never taught to us, you know, it's what we were taught early on in school. Yeah. Being aside from the fact it's all bullshit, lies, and false, mm -hmm. is that America was totally and fully populated. Totally. As fully populated as it really could stand the day Columbus arrived. Yeah, there are over 500 Indian tribes and 14 million Indians there. Sure. There is a city called Cahokia in Illinois, a big Native American trading center that had 45,000 people in it yeah. when Columbus landed. So every part of it, the idea of wilderness is fatuous. All the land, say 510 Indian groups. I wrote in Dalva, I think, that if you put a sheet over America, a white sheet, and let it lay there, you could see all the places where the blood soaked through the sheet. <laughs> You know, there'd be 500 <laughs> places the blood is coming through where all those people were destroyed. Yeah. Where Chief Seattle says, okay, you got the land, but now if you misuse the land, we're all, all our ghosts are going to come back oh, and no. haunt you That's and right. destroy your lives. Yeah, it's yeah. obvious. Yeah. Know what he invented, these Indian ghosts invented? Television! <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. And crack. Uh-huh. Right? What else? That, like, alcohol, uh, wine is okay. Yeah. Well, uh, they, what you else? remember that there's a, that thing that they, they attribute it to Seattle, although it's most it's more anonymous. Uh, how, how can you sell the sky? Yeah, right. You remember that thing? Yeah. And he, yeah. Says, and he says, the great white father wishes to buy our land. He says, but how am I going to explain to, to our people? Yeah. How he also can said, sell the air. How can I sell air, or how can I sell uh, where my grandmother is buried? Well, see, he had that whole thing. He said the same air that that I breathe now is this, is part of the same air that our babies breathe and that our great great ancestors, our grandfathers breathe. Breathe. You know, as Tom says, there's nothing to do about it. No, there right? isn't. Right. Yeah. But one thing you can do about it okay. is reparations. Get it? Great. Yeah. I have to base it just then. Le génocide indien, la destruction des forêts, l'embrigadement des individus, la truculence ou le désespoir de personnages démesurés font partie des principaux thèmes de l'œuvre de Jim Harrison. La nature y assume le rôle mythique de paradis perdu, où l'individu va se ressourcer dans la solitude à la façon de certains rites indiens.
be a little bit of moon tonight. Maybe some coyotes, huh? I've decided to make up my mind about nothing, to assume the water mask, to finish my life disguised as a creek, an eddy, joining at night the full sweet flow, to absorb the sky, to swallow the heat and cold, the moon and the stars, to swallow myself in ceaseless flow.